Hi, John Francois with Ward Science. In this video, we're going to talk about the Sherlock Bones kit, specifically the femur bone. Now, the femur is used for sex determination as well as age determination and race determination. We'll start with the sex determination on the femur. And the first characteristic that we're going to want to measure on here for sex determination is using the vernier calipers. We're going to measure the vertical diameter of the femoral head. So here is the femoral head. The vertical diameter would be this diameter, as opposed to, say, the transverse diameter, which would be over here. So again, we're going to use the outside measurement on the vernier calipers. And then we're going to place the calipers like so. And just pull them tight. And we see that we have a measurement on the outside of about 46 millimeters. So again, males are typically above 44.5 millimeters. The next measurement that we want to take is the bicondylar width. So we have to locate the condyles here, down here, and we're really going to measure the epicondylar width from here to here, the largest possible distance at this part. So we're once again going to use our veneer calipers. We're going to put them around the largest possible distance, push them tight, take a reading over here, and we see that we have around 81 millimeters is the uh, bicondylar width here. Again, males are typically above 76 millimeters, so this result is consistent with a male. Now for the next measurement, we're going to use these uh, special large calipers. So the way that uh, this works is you just take the measurement between these two points and then you take a reading over here. So again, we'll go from the largest possible distance from the head to the uh, condyle and then we'll take a reading over here and we see that we are at approximately 43.5 centimeters, so about uh, 435 millimeters. Typically, males are above 430 millimeters. So again, this is a measurement that is consistent with a male. Uh, the next set of measurements that we take uh, would be the race determination. There's really only one with this, which is when we put the femur down with the curved part pointing upwards, if there is a curved part, uh, we put our hand flat on the table and we see if we're able to pass our fingers below the bone. And if we're able to do that, then we are able to rule out that this is an African bone. If we were not able to pass our fingers underneath, then we would be able to rule out a European bone. The Asian bone could be either way, so we can't rule it out either way. So in this case, we know that we have either an Asian bone or a European bone. So the next set of characteristics that we look at are the age determination characteristics. And for that, we're going to use table nine that corresponds to the femur. And we're gonna run through each one of those. The first one being that the greater trochanter first appears. This would be the Drake greater trochanter right here. So that's appeared, so we know our specimen has passed the age of four. The next one would be that the lesser trochanter first appears. So this feature over here, so that has appeared. So we know that our specimen has passed the ages of 13, 14. The next characteristic would be that the head, the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter first join the shaft. So we see that that is the case here. So we know our specimen has passed the age of 18. And the final characteristic that we look for is that the condyles first join the shaft. So the condyles would be over here, and we see that they have joined the shaft. So we know our specimen has passed the age of 20. So that pretty much, um, uh, that's as far as you can go with age with this particular bone. We know that our specimen is more than 20 years old. And that pretty much concludes our femur bone.